Hey folks, I have a shed which doesn't have any power running to it, but it is dark even during the day, so I wanted to add some lighting. But to make it as simple as possible and use things that I already had, such as these Ryobi 18 volt batteries. Now I've already done a number of different projects using batteries like this for things like simple low-tech lighting, uh, automated emergency lighting, uh, even a materials lifter, a, a powered wheelbarrow, and an electric bicycle. I already had a 3D file from a previous project and this was designed to hold one of those batteries. So I thought I would start here and then just modify it a bit. The main thing is that I wanted to be able to screw this to a wall. So I added a couple of tabs with screw holes in it to be able to use it for mounting. I also designed a backer plate which would just help hold the electrical contacts in place. After making those changes, it was time to send it to the 3D printer. So here's the 3D print with the supports removed on this side, these kind of ridges here. That's for the battery to click into place. We got the little bits on the side that we squeeze. And it clicks in pretty nicely there. And then the springs for the electrical contacts go here and here. I don't have those in yet. These are Keystone 209s. They're little springs. They're uh, spring contacts. And these will connect to the Ryobi battery and then solder in a wire there. And that'll go to the switch and other connections. The circuit here is real simple. We're going to go from the Ryobi battery with one of those Keystone 209 clips through a DC fuse, through a DC rated switch, to the low voltage DC light bulb, and then back to the negative side of the battery. And I am not great at soldering, so I didn't film that. Just uh, solder the wires to the little clips. So here I've got on the negative side, just go into a short piece of black wire. And on the positive side, I uh, soldered the end of a automotive style DC fuse holder directly to that clip. That way we're fused straight off the positive. And then those clips just have to get pushed down onto the plastic there. Um, if you kind of pry them open with a little, you know, a flat blade screwdriver or something in a get them started, that helps. But they just push on down here. And then these components will be out of the way in kind of the upper part here. And then that gives room to insert a battery. Uh, but sometimes the battery can push those clips off. So that's why I'll have that on the back right there like that. This is a 20 amp DC rated switch. Uh, it is a light up style. I'm not gonna use that though. I'm just gonna use it as a regular switch. So I'll put our little short red wire on here. Make sure our fused wire goes through the hole first. Put this on. Push the whole thing back through. And just snap it in place. So with our bare negative wire sticking out, um, we're gonna connect that to our circuit with some of these uh, Wago lever nuts. Uh, these things are actually really great for so many different projects. Uh, it acts as a wire nut. You can get them in, you know, where, where they'll take two conductors, three conductors. I got some uh, some five conductors over here. And the nice thing is you can take stuff back apart really easy. So you can, um, uh, great for experimenting and that sort of thing. Um, but all I have to do here is just have the wire stripped back, flip up the leather, <laughs> lever, push that in 
flip it down and it's on there nice and secure. These are rated for at least 20 amps, 300 volts, so uh, no issues at all there. And then I've got some two conductor cables similar to what's typically used for uh, low voltage uh, outdoor landscape lighting. Just gonna push it through the hole there and I think I'm gonna actually tie a knot in it as a strain relief just so like it can't pull back out through the hole. Strip the ends here. That's the negative. So we'll use this one. Flip up the leather. Leather. <laughs> lever. I can't say the word lever today. Push it in, close it, makes a nice solid connection. And then we're going to do the same thing with the red wire coming off the switch. And this is for a pretty low current project, so I'm just going to use a 5 amp fuse in our fuse holder. And then uh, just make sure all our parts are tucked down out of the way of where the battery is going to go. And that's it, really. Of course, this plate's going to go on the back, help hold those uh, spring contacts in place. And then for the other end of the wire, I've got just a plain inexpensive light bulb holder and a DC light bulb that can run on 18 volts. So I'll just strip the wires here and connect it to the bottom. So you can see how dark it is in here compared to outside. I mean, <laughs> like I disappear in the light. That's how much difference there is. So it's kind of an overcast day out there and I had to crank the camera settings just so we could see this so it wasn't pure black. But I think what I'm going to do is put the battery holder right about here. Uh, that's probably a little bit higher up than a typical light switch but it's kind of nice and out of the way of, you know, whatever tools I might have or anything like that. Uh, and then the power wire, I'll run up and I'll put the light bulb above the door here. We have plenty of room for it. Oh, it's funny on the camera, it looks like it's on an angle. It's not, it's pretty vertical. Now, I did realize while I was getting the other bulb holder that I do have an actual box. So I'll put this up and then the bulb holder can just go right on there. And then also like if I want to wire anything else up in parallel, I got room inside the box for making the junction. So I'll just put that up there. I accidentally didn't record uh, installing the light bulb holder, but all I did was put the electrical box onto the wall and then pull the wires through into the box, connect the two wires to the two screws on the bottom of the light bulb holder, and then install the light bulb holder in place just by tightening down those two screws. And then I just used some of these uh, plastic staples to make sure the wire is secure and out of the way. 
This really was a very simple, straightforward way to add some lighting. I didn't have to dig a trench. I didn't have to buy any solar equipment. Uh, just as simple as possible using stuff I already had. It should also be noted that these bulbs draw less than 300 milliamps. That's not a lot of power. So it'd be very easy to have multiple lights all connected to one battery. In fact, I'm even considering adding a yard light to the end of the shed. And if I do, you'll find out next time. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and check out our clean transportation, renewable energy, and DIY projects right here on this YouTube channel and at our blog at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up.